Well, the state's most powerful member of Congress is pushing a plan to tackle climate change. It's an expanded version of last year's Clean Future Act, and Representative Frank Pallone says it takes an industry-by-industry industry approach to achieve it. The goals are ambitious, eliminate carbon dioxide, and reach net zero emissions by 2050. Our chief political correspondent, Michael Aaron, goes on the record with Congressman Pallone as part of our ongoing series, Peril and Promise. It's called the Clean Future Act. Frank Pallone, chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, <clears throat> is one of the congressmen trying to steer it to passage. He's with us now. Congressman, in essence, what would this bill do? I know it's about a thousand pages long, but give us the, the high point. Well, this is our plan uh, to address climate action. I mean, we know that the planet is warming. We know the negative consequences of that in terms of you know, increased hurricanes and droughts and tornadoes and everything across the country. But New Jersey's at the front line in this climate crisis for a number of reasons. I mean, obviously, if you're living along the coast where I am, you're concerned because you see the sea level rising, you see increased hurricanes. I mean, Sandy being, you know, one of the most powerful. Um, so it's particularly important to our state that we address climate. By doing what? Uh, making everybody drive electric cars? Uh, well, that's part of it. Uh, you know, part of it is, is electrification, uh, not only of vehicles, but also uh, um, with regard to uh, the industrial sector. This, the Clean Future Act, basically, Michael, it addresses uh, climate across the board. So it's transportation. It's uh, moving away from fossil fuels towards renewables like wind and solar to power our utility. Let me stop yeah. you there. Is there enough wind and solar to power the world? There will be eventually. Uh, you know, right now that's not the case. Uh, and we don't, we are technology neutral. We don't say you can't have fossil fuels. Uh, but on the other hand, we try to move towards renewables because the, that's a major way of cutting back on these greenhouse gases that warm the planet. Will there be enough charging stations for our electric vehicles? That's what we need to do. A big part of this is investing in charging stations and making you know uh, um, uh, uh, electric vehicles available and that they can be used. Yes. Can you get this through Congress? You, uh, in the Senate, you're going to need at least 10 Republicans going for this. Uh, the Republicans say this plan is way out of bounds. Uh, that it's going to cost tens of thousands of jobs and that we need a hybrid of oil and gas industry along with electrification. What do you say? Are you going to be able to get it passed? Well, this is a comprehensive plan. We would like to get it all passed as one package, but if not, uh, you know, we'll try to put it in, uh, you know, different uh, methods. I mean, I, I'm not sold on it has to be, it has to move as one bill. But look, there's a lot of Republicans that are concerned about climate, may, uh, particularly in our state. And, um, you know, when you talk about jobs, uh, clean energy creates jobs. I mean, there's a lot of jobs that can be created. And, you know, other countries are moving forward, you know, in terms of clean energy. And we can't be left behind in this global competition for these jobs. So this creates more jobs. It really does. And, I, and, and stimulates the economy. As you know, the president signed yesterday the American Rescue Plan, and he expects that to be followed up by a major infrastructure package. And the infrastructure package that we're moving on in maybe April, May, uh, is another opportunity to incorporate a lot of what's in the Clean Future Act. And that's what we plan to do. So things like, you know, uh, uh, greater efficiency, resiliency, uh, upgrading the electricity grid, the brownfields cleanups, uh, money for uh, to eliminate lead pipes for drinking water. All these things are an opportunity to address a lot of the same issues that are in the Clean Future Act and move on climate action through this infrastructure bill as well. Well, we wish you well. The future of our grandchildren depends on it. Thanks, Congressman Frank Pallone. Good to see you, Michael, again. Thanks. Lead funding for Peril and Promise is provided by Dr. P. Roy Vagalos and Diana T. Vagalos. Major support is provided by the Mark Haas Foundation and Sue and Edgar Wachenheim III and the Cheryl and Philip Milstein family. Mm -hmm.